or that special moment when you told her how you felt about her skanky friends. Or the time she asked if her butt looked big and you thought about it a little too long. And for the time you laughed a little too hard when she fell. Diamonds. Welcome to RenderReady.com. I'm your host, Al Heck, and thanks again for tuning in. Today, we build a diamond. For this to work, we need to focus on three separate tasks, building the geometry, caustics, and the prism shift of light. To build our diamond, we're gonna take a cylinder and twist it and reshape it until it looks absolutely marvelous. Then, we will focus in on the caustics, but also a brief explanation on what caustics are. Finally, we'll create a prism shift of light. This shows up in diamonds naturally due to its refractive properties, but we are going to simulate it using a little trick. And here's the hint, you have to use more than one light. Also, due to the length of all three minutes of After Effects work I did on this project, I decided to put it at the end of this tutorial. So you only have one video to watch. You're welcome. And let's start the show. Let's go to our front view first. Click on Edit and go to Configure. And inside Configure in the Attributes Manager, there is Display, Filter, View. In back, we're going to click the Image button, and this is where we're going to bring in our Diamond Schematic. And if you just search Diamond Schematic, it's the first one you'll find. We're going to set the transparency to 75%, and we also want to just offset our diamond so that the side view is in the center of our X and our Y axis. Then we're going to go to our top view and do the exact same thing, but we're going to use this for the top of the diamond. So set this to 75%, move this over to the center, and down. And we have a rough schematic of the top of our diamond, and at the side, the side of our diamond. Now let's go ahead and create a cylinder. So in your primitives, go to Cylinder. Now, <clears throat> we're going to design this diamond edgewise, and then we're going to rotate it and do all the crazy stuff with it. Um, so let's adjust the height, and then with the top view, increase the size of your diamond until it fits circularly. And then we need to add in uh, columns or, or segments, I'm sorry to match where the diamond fragments into multiple places. So I count once, one, uh, this, uh, the girdle of the diamond is going to count for two, so three. Uh, then there's going to be another split right here, so we're going to have one split, two split, three split, four split, plus if you add the one of the tops and the bottoms, that's five. So set that to five, set your rotation segments down to eight, and then go ahead and press C. This is going to turn your object into an editable object, which you can see from up here. And all an ed editable object is is something that, like a primitive, that can be mended or, or adjusted. Um, primitives can't. And then we're going to go and select all the faces by going to our polygon selection tool, select all, go to structure, I'm sorry, functions, and then click triangulate. And this is going to give us all these cute little edges right here. Now, let's go ahead and resize this because we need to know that these... And, and we're not going to resize them thickness-wise yet. And we're not going to for a specific reason. Um, and I'll show you in just a second. So let's resize this here. And when you do this, uh, go to your selection tool. I usually select the square one. Turn off only select visible elements. This will allow you to select all the elements throughout the entire uh, geometry, even the ones you don't see. And we will align these vertically to fit our model. So what I would do is select these top polygon, these top nodes, I'm sorry, right here. And we are just going to rotate this It looks like uh, 22.5 degrees or so. Middle row, and we're going to rotate this 
22 and a half degrees. And then we're going to take this outer row and we're going to make sure that this gets rotated about 22 and a half degrees as well. And then, and you'll see why in just a second, but this is going to make our lives a lot easier. Then, what we're going to do is create a camera, and then we're going to create a circle. And the circle is going to be set on the XZ plane, so it's going to sit horizontally. I'm going to widen it up, bring it up a little bit. Right click on, let's just call this diamond for right now. Right click on your camera, Cinema 4D tags, align the spline, and we're going to drop the circle spline into the path. And what that's going to do is set the camera onto the circle spline. And then we're going to right click on the camera, go to target, and we're going to drop the diamond into the target object. And if you look through, we get a direct shot of the diamond itself. The reason why we're going to do this is we want to make sure that we cut perfectly horizontally and vertically. Now that we got this camera set up, before we start cutting away, let's go ahead and get rid of this little edge that we have inside of this diamond right here. Um, so go to your selection tool, uh, the live selection tool, and we're just going to select these points right here. And I put this in my quick menu. It's called the melt command. You can find it in the functions array. Just go ahead and click that. And what it'll do is it'll melt that into one polygon. So now that we got all those melted, we're going to go back to our camera view. Oops. Perspective. Click on the camera. And we are going to go to our knife. Make sure it's set to line and visible only, and we are going to cut down each one of these paths. And then in our line position, we're going to rotate our camera to where the yellow, the green yellow, uh, the green y-axis is vertical, and we're just going to continue to cut all the way around this diamond increasing by 12.5%. Now that we got that done and it's perfect, let's go off our camera and before we really start going nuts here, we should probably take care of the girdle right here. And the reason why I say is the girdle goes down and then up, and then down and then up, and down and then up. And it's kind of hard to do geometry-wise, so we need to address this issue now before we actually start shaping our diamond. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this polygon selection tool. And we're just going to select all these middle polygons right here. And then we're going to go right click and go to our knife tool. Go to plane. So cut, cut, cut. Double check it because it's the last time you're going to get a chance to. And I think we look good. Excellent. So now we're going to go into the shaping of the diamond. So let's start off by worrying about this top layer. So go to your polygon selection tool. And we are going to just turn off the select only visible. And we're just going to highlight all of these polygons except for the top one. So now that we got these polygons, this lower level of polygon selected, go to Selection and click Hide Selected, because we don't need to worry about all that other crap. And then we're going to go to this point mode, 
and we are going to make sure that uh, no vi only visible selected elements are turned off. Select this top group of polygon nodes. I keep calling them polygons, they're nodes. Shrink it down. Then select this next layer of nodes, edges, whatever you want to call them, and shrink that down. Now we need to make sure that these edges match up, so we're going to increase the size a little bit. And you can see how we're starting to line up to this diamond. Then we're going to go back to selection, unhide selected, unhide all. Then we're going to go to this middle row right here, this lower row, go to points, select those, shrink that down to here. And then we're going to select these last group of points and scale down the size to point 1. And we almost have a very complete diamond. Um, as you can see, we run into a little issue in that some of these edges um, don't really work. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these points right here, increase these in size, and then we're going to um, now select these points, increase these in size, and now we got a perfectly round diamond. So now that we got these points, let's go to our points in between select these and now we can adjust the girdle which gives us a little more of a realistic diamond edging so now that we got the diamond to this point all we need to do is do a little melting so select your uh, live selection tool then go to polygon faces select these two polygons and click on melt and do that for the rest of the edges and then congrats everyone you have yourself a freaking diamond all right now if you render this out eh, it get all smooth and nasty looking it looks like crap um go ahead and select your diamond select the faces then i want you to select all of them then go right click disconnect and turn off preserve groups. Now every edge is pronounced and if we render this out real quickly you can see all the edges of a diamond. So now that we got the uh, diamond geometry created let's go ahead and create the, the material for the diamond. So go to file new material and in color we're gonna set this to pure white. So you're gonna want to turn on your transparency and set your transparent refraction index. Now, uh, water has a 1.3 refraction index, but uh, diamonds have a 2.413, something like that, 1.6, but 2.4 is close enough. Specular color, we're gonna set the width down to like, let's say 30. We're gonna blast the height up to 90, and we're gonna give about a 35% uh, inner width. So everything within this range of uh, highlight will always be at 90% and then it drops off drastically and uh, then we're also going to add a reflection and this reflection we're gonna set this to about 75% and we're gonna make this have a Fresnel shader as well and that way um, it only reflects at angles but it doesn't reflect dead on so you get that really beautiful look of uh, uh, the diamond itself so if I take this shader and drop this into the diamond and render it out, that looks wonderful, but I need something to light it with. So go ahead and grab a plane, drop it on the floor, and uh, we'll make this, let's say, 2000, just to give it some distance. And we're going to go ahead and create a spotlight as well. And we are going to aim this spotlight 